Thank you for purchasing the Craig Adaptive Cutting System Plunge Saw and Guide Track. Before you get started using them, you're going to want to take a few minutes to become familiar with the saw and then get it paired up with the guide track. It's all covered in your owner's manual, but we'll take you through it here just so you can see it clearly. Now, for the saw, you know, a plunge saw is a little bit different than an ordinary circular saw, so you're going to want to get familiar with the controls. And then, even though it comes calibrated from the factory, to make sure that you're going to get the precise results and smooth cuts that are possible, it's worth taking a couple of minutes to check basic settings like the bevel angles. After that, you'll pair the saw up with the guide track, which is a really simple process to ensure that it glides smoothly and cuts perfectly. Now, if you also purchase the Adaptive Cutting System project table, we'll take you through setting that up in a separate video. The first thing to do is get familiar with how a plunge saw is different from an ordinary circular saw. First, the blade is fully shrouded, which is great for safety, and there's no swinging blade guard. The blade drops down to your set depth of cut, then retracts. The plunge saw also has a riving knife. It follows behind the blade to ensure that the cut can't close up and cause the blade to bind. It's another great safety feature. For even greater safety, there's an interlock on the handle that you have to squeeze before you can plunge the saw or turn it on. From there, you'll find some features that might be familiar if you've used a circular saw. First is a scale that makes it easy to set the angle for bevel cuts. There's also a blade depth setting, but setting the depth is much easier on a plunge saw. Just move the control to the cutting depth you want and then tighten it down. The saw will plunge to that depth every time. You'll also find a few other features that are specific to a plunge saw. The Craig plunge saw has variable speed that you control using this dial. That lets you vary the speed as needed for cutting different materials. These two knobs in the base are adjustable to ensure smooth gliding on the guide track without play. This red knob lets you activate the saw's anti-kickback feature. There's also onboard wrench storage. With a fully shrouded base, dust collection is very effective using the included dust bag, or you can connect a vacuum hose. There are a few other features that you can explore, but that's the basics of the Craig plunge saw. Though the saw comes calibrated from the factory, it's a good idea to check the bevel angle to ensure that the blade is perpendicular to the base. Doing that is easy. First, set the saw to full cutting depth. Second, you need to remove the splinter guard from the housing because it gets in the way of the plunge until you trim it later. Now with the saw unplugged, you can plunge it completely and then hold the base to keep it there. Then, use a good quality square to check that the blade is set at 90 degrees to the base. If you don't see any gaps, you know the blade is set correctly. If you do see any gaps, you can use one of the onboard wrenches to adjust these two screws in the base. You'll find more details in the owner's manual. Then check the bevel indicator to make sure it's aligned with the zero mark. If you need to adjust the indicator, you can loosen a set screw and then reposition the indicator. With that, the saw is all set to make perfectly square cuts. Before moving on, you can reinstall the splinter guard. Now you can pair the plunge saw with the guide track. The first step is to install the cord manager by simply sliding it on the infeed end of the track and then tightening the knob. The cord manager helps the power cord and vacuum hose if you're using one, follow the saw without catching. Now you can set the saw to ensure that it follows the track smoothly. To do that, start by placing the saw on the track. You'll notice that there's just a little bit of play. To remove that, you'll adjust these two knobs, the tracking controllers. They close up the gap between the ridge on the track and the channel on the saw base. If you tighten them all the way, you see the saw won't move. Back the controllers off just a bit so the saw glides smoothly but without any play. This is a good time to point out the anti-kickback control on the saw too. With it in the off position, the saw can slide freely back and forth on the track. In the on position, it prevents the saw from moving backward. That's a great safety feature because if the blade ever binds during a cut, the saw can't kick back toward you. With the saw set up and the tracking controllers adjusted, it's time to trim the anti-chip strip. The anti-chip strip on the track is made extra wide so that you can trim it to match your plunge saw exactly. To trim the strip, first place the track on a scrap of 3 quarter inch plywood that's as long as the track. 
Now adjust the saw's cutting depth to one quarter inch and lock it down. Place the saw on the track and turn on the anti-kickback control. Also, go ahead and install the dust bag. Then you can plug the saw in and make the cut. When you plunge the saw, it will trim away a portion of the splinter guard. As you move the saw along, it also trims the anti-chip strip. Now, when you plunge the blade, it will hug tight against the strip. You can see that not all the strip gets trimmed away. As you make deeper cuts, you'll trim a bit more of the anti-chip strip away at the beginning of the cut. The anti-chip strip gives splinter protection on the track side of the cut, but you'll also want to protect against splinters on the outside of the cut. That's done with the splinter guard. First, loosen the splinter guard screw. Lower the guard and then re-tighten the screw. The bottom edge of the splinter guard should rest right on the surface of the workpiece. With that, you'll have protection against splinters on the outside of the blade as well as on the inside. So there you go. In just a few simple steps and a few minutes, you've got the adaptive cutting system plunge saw and guide track all set to go. You know that you've got the saw's accuracy all dialed in and it's paired with the guide track, so you're gonna get those straight, smooth, splinter-free cuts that you can expect. Now, I've got a little bit of a mess here from trimming the guide strip, but you can already see what a beautiful cut result you're gonna get. It's smooth, there's no tear out, and while there is a little bit of this blue, not sawdust, but guide strip dust right now, with the splinter guard in place and the dust bag on, the rest of your cuts are gonna be nice and clean. So, now you're familiar with your Craig Adaptive Cutting System plunge saw, you've got it all set for the guide track, and you're ready to start cutting.